Number 10, the Quran was dotted and voweled much later than Uthman. So that means that the companions did not know whether Atta is a Ya or the other way around, Qaf is a Fa or the other way around. So that means that they weren't reading the Quran properly. Well, Mr. Christian, don't panic again because just like I said before, the, the companions had learned this from the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the vowels and the dots were not made except for the non-Arabs that were entering Islam because Islam was spreading like crazy all over the world and people were coming to learn the Arabic language so that they had to make it easier for them and also for the people that were losing the authentic Arabic language as it was at the time of the Prophet peace be upon him because we know even that English had a lot of change from the time from 200 300 years ago until our days now so the people of that era knew their language more than the people that came later on and I'll give you an example of this so you stop panicking is in the Hebrew Bible in the same Bible that you're looking at you're saying that uh, the, the Arabs changed the vowels and the dots the Hebrew Bible is dotted and voweled now the same way the Arabic Bible was and their Semitic languages they come from the same roots and what you're reading now of the Bible at least the one of the Bibles was at one time not dotted and not voweled and that's how Prophet Moses peace be upon him received these scriptures without vowels or dots because at that time they did not need those so whoever comes and tells you oh the Quran was dotted and voweled tell them to look at their own history before they come and criticize other people and that's not even called criticism that's called being dumb now with vowels and dots again I say that was done at the time of Hajjaj Al Hajjaj bin Yusuf and uh, that was due to the lack of understanding of the vocabulary of some people that were reading the Quran at the time <coughs> and of course uh, as we know the companions of the Prophet peace be upon him not only was that their mother tongue or their mother language but also they used to hear the Quran and memorize the Quran before it was even written exactly how the Prophet peace be upon him taught them to the Quran so there's no two ways of going about this and whoever comes and, and says otherwise is already debunked because the pronunciation was taught from the Prophet peace be upon him whether or not these people knew their languages and also it was their mother tongue as we said so they were very comfortable with it until what happened at the time of Hajjaj and I will read this to you it says that uh, Aba Ahmed al duali said I heard a man from the Muslims reciting or reading the Quran but not in a correct way with correct vocabulary and it was hard for him to pronounce and to read the Quran with correct vocabulary so Abu Ahmed al duali then went to the ruler of Basra in Iraq uh, his name is uh, Ziyad and he told him about this matter and then Abu Ahmed al duali was appointed him and another man to make copies of the Quran with vowels and dots so they can make it easier for the non-Arabs that are entering Islam and coming to learn the Arabic language so they can read the divine inspiration of Allah and come to the Muslim land and, and read it in the texture not in the translation as a lot of them started doing this Bible. This is the Roman Catholic version of the Bible. The Douay or Reims version of the Bible. This is an encyclopedia of 73 books. Seven more than the King James Version. You use certain technical terms like, like Apocrypha, which the masses of Christendom do not know. What is this Apocrypha? Apocrypha means doubtful, weak, not deserve to be in the book of God. As such, 
the Protestants threw it out as a fabrication. These seven books are thrown out from here. Now you tell me that this is the word of God. The King James Version with his 66 books. This was first published in 1611 by order of His Majesty King James, whose name is still based today. Authorized version, authorized by who? Not God Almighty, by King James. He authorized it, not God Almighty. Now, it goes back to the ancient manuscripts. I'm told, what is ancient? It's just four to six hundred years after Jesus is ancient. Now we have access to the most ancient manuscripts, most ancient. And this translation here, or version, the RSV, the Revised Standard Version, goes to the most ancient manuscripts. They date from two to three hundred years after Jesus. So closer to the source, the more authentic any document would be, closer to the source. This is common sense. If Jesus, in the time of Jesus, if this was written and he had signed it, autographed it, shh, no questions asked. This is two to three hundred years after, this is four to six hundred years after. So they published this translation, published in your own country here, as well as in Britain, Canada, all these countries, simultaneously you produce this Bible. And we are told some glowing tributes are being paid to this translation. It says here, Church of England newspaper says that the finest version which has been produced in the present century, this one, the finest version, the Times, the Times of UK, England says, the most accurate and close rendering of the original. Now, prepare for the shock. I said, prepare for the shock. From these 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they say, yet the King James Version has grave defects. And that these defects are so many and so serious. They are, these are not my words. They are, so, they are so many and so serious as to call for revision in the English translation. Call for revision in the revised. It. And in the revision, in the authorized King James Version, that he gave his only begotten son. The 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they threw it out. Then, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. From the first episode of John, chapter 5, verse 7, where it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. I said, no, but it's not in my Bible. Is this not the word of God? In my Bible, it's not there. Why is it not there? Because your scholars, 32 scholars of the highest eminence, Bible scholars, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they say this is a, another fabrication, another interpolation. So they also threw it out without any ceremony. So, so I look up for Mark chapter 16, I see it ends at verse 8. 9 to 20 is missing. Did I take it out? The Muslims took it out? No. 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 covering de denominations, they thought it fit that this is another fabrication. And they also threw it out. It's not in my Bible. Therefore, it is not the word of God. But, I pick up another Bible. Look at this. Look at these two. Identical. Look at that. What was thrown out? The ascension. Now they put it back again. How come? How come? What games are you people playing? The ordinary people, poor people, they don't know what's going on. What game is being played? Who knows? You read the preface. In the preface we are told, that individuals and two church denominations, they stampeded them, they forced them that they should put it back. If not, they're going to preach against this book to say, look, don't buy this, buy the King James Version. Don't buy this, buy the King James. The most up-to-date Bible going to the most ancient manuscripts. 
No, 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 no. Don't touch that. This is the safer one. Because it has everything that you want to preach. To catch the fish. It's easier to catch the fish with this than with this. The bait. Ascension is now restored to the text. Says the prophet. Why? Not God told them so. 